homeschooling mother, so I use this as a homeschooling lesson this week, and I found this to be very interesting. Now, one of the bloodiest wars we ever had was the Civil War, and that was how Memorial Day started. So this is the general orders from Washington, D.C., May 5th, 1868. The 30th day of May, 1868, is designated for the purpose of strewing with flowers or otherwise decorating the graves of comrades who died in defense of their country during the late rebellion and whose bodies now lie in almost every city, village, and hamlet churchyard in the land. In this observance, no form of ceremony is prescribed, but posts and comrades will in their own way arrange such fitting services and testimonials of respect as circumstances may permit. By order of General John A. Logan, and it's said underneath, Commander-in-Chief. Now, Memorial Day, especially those first few decades, was quite a big to-do in our nation, and so much so that in 1915, this following poem became very popularized. And it says this, and I found this to be quite beautiful. I hope you do too. We cherish too the poppy red that grows on fields where valor led. It seems to signal the skies, the blood of heroes never dies. You know, unfortunately, I know, isn't that a beautiful poem? Unfortunately, since probably, well, I would say in my entire life, Memorial Day has really diminished in its importance. I mean, take a look around. There should be thousands and thousands of people here today to honor our veterans. And instead, we have a handful. And I was, um, I was fortunate towards the beginning of the campaign, I was actually in a veterans parade in San Diego. And I cried because there were hardly there was hardly anybody there to watch the parade and they said in San Diego it was actually Oceanside that that was the largest gathering they had had and quite frankly it was pretty pathetic unfortunately what's happened in our country and forgive me for saying this I like your no shea shirt because that brings me to the point that I'm going to say under my humble opinion we live in Marxist rule our public school systems are teaching our children socialism and to hate the red, white, and blue. Well, I'll tell you something. I'm honored and proud that I was raised a military brat because it taught me patriotism and a deep, deep love for this nation. And I remember... Oh gosh, when we were kids, Memorial Day and Independence Day, I don't know how many of you grew up on a military base, but they were spectacular. Did, how many of you have seen the Thunderbirds or the Blue Angels fly? Oh gosh. When I was a kid, I thought that was the coolest thing ever. And then the fireworks displays and then all the, you know, activities they had for children. And I grew up having that longing and sense of patriotism for our country because of that. So I think my roots. Um, it was like Christmas, you know, every 4th of July and Memorial Day. And speaking of Christmas, I remember in our home, my mother, God rest her soul, she died during this campaign, she had cancer. And I remember she would invite, I, I kid you not, we must have had half the GIs on base in our home every Thanksgiving and Christmas dinner. And I, I liked it because I didn't have any brothers, so it was like having brothers around all the time. But as an adult, I do, I, I sometimes wonder, I was, I was a little, little girl, and it was, you know, the 70s, and it was Vietnam, and uh, I wonder sometimes how many of those GIs that came to our home, how many of them lost their lives in Vietnam, or maybe later on in Desert Storm. So, for that, I, um, I wanted to quote something George Washington said, which is actually something is very relevant today. The hour is fast approaching on which the honor and success of this army and the safety of our bleeding country depend. 
Remember the officers and soldiers that you are free men fighting for the blessings of liberty. Yay, yay. Thank you. Yes, they know. Thank you. Thank you. You know, I a few months ago had the honor of listening to Tom Tancredo. Tom Tancredo is a former 2008 presidential candidate, former congressman out of Colorado. And he recently just endorsed our campaign, which was such an honor, uh, especially because I left the Republican Party. I'm not a Republican candidate, so for a Republican to endorse our campaign was quite the honor. But he said something during the speech, and it was in reference to the Ron Paul revolution. And he said something that was eerie. I mean, it gave me chills up my spine, but it's the truth. He said there was a revolution, and in 2008, they won. Yeah. Folks, our soldiers that are fighting for our freedoms are not here right now to help us defend our own country. So we, today, we have to be the soldiers. We do. We, we must for our children, for our veterans, which like for my father, I'm not going to let this country go completely to communism. I saw what my father went through. I didn't see him the first few years of my life because he was over there fighting in Vietnam. And it's not going to be in vain. And I wanted to read what I felt was very moving when I was reading the casualties we've had today as we honor these soldiers. 25,000 lost their lives in the American Revolutionary War. 625,000 lost their lives in the Civil War. 117,000 in World War I. 405,000 in World War II. 34,000 in the Korean War. 58,000 in the Vietnam War. And since 9-11, over 5,000 soldiers have lost their lives with 45,000 severely wounded. Every day when we wake up, that should be a reminder of why we are fighting. We don't have much time. And it's really sad. I've been a Tea Party. I, look, I've been a political activist for over six years. And I find it really sad that even in the Tea Parties, we can't get along. And we fight over political parties. We can't do that anymore. We're losing our country. And all these people have lost their lives. And that war memorial that was dedicated. Are we going to keep fighting? Why are we fighting when people have lost their lives for our freedom and our liberty? We have to get along. We have to unite. We cannot let Marxists and people who love radical communists get into office. It's up to us to get together and support one another and fight for our liberties. You know? One of the very first um, campaign events that I spoke at was the Mojave Veterans Cross Memorial. How many of you know the story? Well, we won. We won the victory. We won the battle in court. But unfortunately, some anti-American, uh, probably somebody who follows the ACLU, went and stole that memorial recently. And they still haven't found it. There's an award reward uh, to bring it back. But when I spoke at that event, there were some soldiers that had just come back from Iraq and they had heard about the memorial. I mean, they literally had just come back and they had a matter of days before, before the event and they traveled cross country to come to this event, which uh, was, how emotional is that? They keep fighting for our country. And one of them was a 19 year old kid, my stepdaughter's age, and he gave me his tags. And I said, no, I, I, don't, I don't want your tags. You should keep them. And he said, no, it would be my honor for you to have them. And I wear it. I wear it at almost every single event. I mean, if I'm dressed up a little bit more, I don't wear them because it doesn't really look good with a cocktail dress. But I try to wear these every single event to remind me, to motivate me on those days that I get tired of campaigning all across the state. This motivates me between this and my child and my son. 